Well, hello, my name is Andy Tidy, and welcome back to another edition of Canal Hunter. We're into our fourth season of Canal Hunter, and for this season, we are following the live canals to show you how the existing canals out here on the northern reaches of the BCN connect into all the lost bits which I've been showing you in the last three series. Well in the last episode we followed our line of coal which had been picked up from the Cannock coal field out at Hensford and we're on a mission to track down the line of this canal all the way through to its delivery point at the BSA factory just to the south of the Camp Hill Locks in East Birmingham. And we ended up here at Pelsall. We've finished with the newer Cannock Extension Canal and we've now moved onto the older Worley and Essington Canal. And in this episode, we're gonna follow the towpath and the history all the way through from here to Anglesey Basin at the foot of the Chase Water Reservoir. The last load of commercial coal to be moved from the Hensford Basin was by a BW workman named Bill Littler. In 1961, he was summoned to go to Hensford to pick up a coal for the steam engine at Norbury. Now, he didn't realise that the Cannock locks had been closed. Now, he forced a passage up the Hatherton branch reached the church bridge locks, discovered they were padlocked. So in true boatman style, broke the padlocks and went through. He had a hell of a job getting up there and having managed to get an empty boat up, reckoned it was absolutely impossible to get back down again with a loaded one. So he loaded his boat up and he came the long way around out here to Pelsall Common. Now, he turned to the west to Wolverhampton to get down the Wolverhampton locks, but we are going the opposite way. We're going that way, out towards Brown Hills. I said at the conclusion of my last episode that Pelsall Common is a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde kind of place, but I didn't really elaborate. Pelsall Common these days is an oasis of calm and tranquility. It's absolutely gorgeous. And on a cold, frosty morning like this, there's no finer place to go for a walk or a cycle ride. But it wasn't always that way. See, back in the 1800s, this area was an absolute hive of heavy industrialised industry. If we look just to the west, there was the Pelsall Common Colliery with its large basin. And just behind it, there was the Pelsall Common Pumping Engine. This was the mine pumping engine used to drain the mines in this region. And then behind me, there is the Pelsall Works Bridge, believed to be the oldest Horsley Ironworks bridge in the country. Now the Pelsall Works Bridge got its name from the Midlands Spelter Works, which is just beyond it. Now that's all gone, its basins have gone. But if you kick into the earth on that far bank, you'll find masses of slag, ash and industrial waste. And just beyond the Midland Spelter Works, there was a mineral railway bridge which spanned the canal. This came in to reach the Pelsall Wood Colliery. But again, this was one of the pits which became expired. And even in 1942, that connection bridge was removed. But all of these collieries and pumping engines are really only an entree to what really existed on the common. Today, where you see big, wide open spaces, there used to be three huge iron plants. I've seen the plans for these iron plants. It was absolutely vast. But even by 1900, it had all been swept away. Perhaps the best vision of what this place looked like is in an oil painting which is an interpretation of what used to be. And as you can see from this painting, there is nothing urban and tranquil about the origins of Pelsall Common. Today, the only remains on Pelsall Common of its heavy industrial past is the slightest of indentations which show where the arm that went into the Pelsall Wood Colliery used to exit the mainline canal. 
with its roving bridge over the top. Anyhow, this episode is all about the canal in its beauty between here and Anglesey Basin. So let's go and take a cycle ride down the towpath and see what historical remains we can find. So let's go. Now around here, bridge names tend to be pretty functional. This one behind me is York's Foundry Bridge. And beyond it, there lies the York's Foundry Basin, which is still in water. And immediately to the west of the canal at this point, there was the York's Foundry. Just beyond it, there was the short 500 yard Gilpin's Arm. Now this is a private arm, which the uh, BCN maintained the, the bridge over the entrance. It's all gone and today just a handful of old black and white images still remain to show what the Gilpin Arm used to look like. There's barely a mark on the towpath wall these days. Off to the right hand side or the northern bank of the canal near High Bridge there are repeated indentations of the old unloading and loading basins. These were the basins used to reach the collieries and the brickworks and the clay pits and uh, the basins still exist but they're overgrown. Perhaps the largest of these inlets uh, which was a private waterway runs right ahead in here and this is in to the Slough Arm. It's a half a mile privately owned canal that went in and built in in stages. It went in, uh, eventually was built with a lock halfway up which allowed it to connect into a higher level. You may wonder where a small little arm like this would get the water supply in order to have a higher top level. Well, it came from the mine pumping engine. You might remember me saying that the Brown Hills common area had about 80 shallow pits in it. Well, eventually, as they went deeper, they needed to empty them of the water coming in. And so they dug Cathedral Pit behind the Rising Sun pub. This was a bit deeper and with a pumping engine in it, it kept the local mines dry and the surplus water went either into the Norton Pools, which is now the Chase Water Reservoir, or it was fed into the slough arm to keep it in water. It's funny how sometimes some of these old canal stories start to intersect and this place is one of them. I'm just outside Brown Hills to the west and I'm standing beside the old railway bridge. The line has been decommissioned for many years but this is the railway track that leads all the way over the hill and down to Litchfield. 
You may remember it being beside the Sandfields pumping station. Well, the Sandfields pumping station pumped the water over the hill in a pipe laid beside the railway track to the Black Country to try to prevent the outbreak of cholera. Well, one of the features of the pipeline was it tended to accumulate a certain amount of air, just like a central heating system at home. And to relieve this air pressure, there had to be a vent. And they built the vent just behind me. This vent looked like a vast, tall chimney, and it was known as the surge stack. Now, I got the operation of the surge stack rather wrong in my first estimation. I thought it was like an open pipe so that if the far end of the pipeline got closed the water would go whooshing up like a fountain and spill out. Actually apparently that wasn't the case. Apparently there was a u-shaped pipe that went up to the top and then down again and this u-shaped pipe attracted the air, it captured it and it had a vent at the top which then released into the atmosphere. Anyhow the surge stack was right beside the railway, immediately behind me. But these days there is not even a trace of a foundation to be found. Anyhow, onwards to Brown Hills. Now Brown Hills is a town with a rich mining heritage. Here at the end of the Brown Hills waterfront there were the twin arms of the railway interchange basin. The one to the left still remains in water for at least part of its length. It would have gone as far as the petrol filling station beyond. And the one to the right has been largely filled in and just the final bit is used as a slipway for the local canoe club. But these days the Brown Hills waterfront is really rather lovely. I mean you've got all the local facilities for boaters, you know, L-Sands and uh, water points, stuff like that. You've also got the added benefit of a Tesco's right beside the canal. One of the key things that people so often ask me about the northern reaches of the BCN is, are they safe? Where can we moor? And that is a fair question. I would say Pelsall Common is one of the really safe spots. And here at Brown Hills is another one. I've moored up here a lot of times and I've never had any grief. So after years in the doldrums, you get the feeling that Brown Hills is getting back into its stride. Sure, its high street suffers the usual problem of a loss of shops and amenities, but there are still the big shops like B&M, Wilkinson's, Tesco's. But probably more importantly, lots of the old brownfield sites have been redeveloped and at either end of the town there are huge areas of new residential property being built. Some of them social housing in flats, some of them posh housing. It's a, it's a good mix and you do get the feeling that Brown Hills, a town once very much down on its uppers as it were, is now rediscovering itself. And uh, I've got to admit I have a very soft spot for Brown Hills. Well, I'd have to say that though. I live a few miles away, and they all know me around here. Anyhow, if we're going to get to Anglesey Basin with our load of coal, we need to get ahead. No more of this hanging around looking at interesting historical stuff. We're going that way. Possible to come to somewhere like this without having a look for some of the old images to see what this place used to look like back in the 1940s and earlier. Brown Hills waterfront, 
there wasn't vast amounts there, apart from the railway interchange basin at the north end with its twin arms, and the gas works halfway along. We have arrived at Catsill Junction, and any junction on a canal seems to be a significant place. This is the point where the old main line came in from this side to my right and went off behind me, leading down to the locks at Ogley. Off to my left there is a bridge which takes you onto the Doe End Canal. Spelt D-A-W, Door End, but it's Doe End. That one is an old narrow branch which led off for about five miles to pick up the coal mines and the limestone workings in the area around Aldridge. And that's what we'll be following next week. But now we're going to head up what was the old main line, but is now generally referred to as the Anglesey branch. But the Anglesey branch proper doesn't start until the top of the Ogley Locks. Now my plan had been to do a cycle ride all the way along here to give you a really good idea of what this area looked like. However, we suffered something of a technical problem because just outside Pelsall, the back wheel decided to deflate. So we're doing this exploration on Shanks's pony. Don't worry, you won't miss out on the Anglesey branch all the way from here to the reservoir. What I'll do is in my next video, I will make sure that we get lots of footage of the branch coming the other way. Anyhow, let's go up the Anglesey branch and see what we can find. So now we've reached the start of the Anglesey branch proper. The Anglesey branch runs off behind me out towards Norton Pools, now known as the Chasewater Reservoir. However, all is not exactly as it seems. To be honest, few things are exactly as they seem on the canals. Out here, is the start of the Ogley Locks, so that was the main line running down to Huddlesford Junction. Oft just to the left of the top of the Ogley Locks there is Ogley Basin. On the face of it just another transshipment and loading basin. In actual fact there's a little bit more to this basin than meets the eye. You see originally the line from here to the foot of the dam was just a feeder, a stream. But then they decided they want to make it navigable. And in my innocent assumption, I just figured that the stream used to come in across here and they just dug out the channel a little bit wider. In actual fact, this basin entrance is the entrance where the old Norton feeder came into the canal. When they dug it out and they made the new navigable channel just over here, slightly to the west, they only retained maybe half of the original feeder line. To achieve this navigable cut all the way to the foot of what is now Chasewater Reservoir, a deal was done. William Middleton owned the land and a kind of a swap of land was agreed in 1853 and that meant that the channel for the boats could be more straightforward. And so the line that you take today is slightly different for at least the first half than it used to be when it was merely a feeder channel. The original line of the canal came one side and then the other in a series of curves. Not that there's anything to be seen of that today. So full-size narrowboats were able to make their way up from here at Ogley Junction all the way up to the foot of the dam at Norton Pools, or Chase Water, whichever you like to call it. And there at the end of the canal stood a large pumping engine used to recirculate water from here on the Wolverhampton level up into the reservoir for storage for future use. Not only was there a pumping engine on the site of the houses on the dam wall, there was also the Hammerwich Colliery Pithead, otherwise known as the Marquis. Now, the Marquis had sunk its workings down 
not only to work the land below the level of the dam, it also worked its way up under the dam itself and out under chase water. Now you can imagine what happened next. Ultimately, the land above Marquis Colliery subsided, taking the dam down with it. So even in recent years, there's had to be massive amount of work done to buttress up this northern end of the, uh, the dam wall and also to try to plug some of the enormous leaks that make their way through it. Now, as I mentioned in my last episode, at this point, there is a large, severe fault line under the ground. And the cold measures are literally sheared off so they are a thousand feet deep, which in wetland was uneconomic and an impractical proposition to try to mine. So you find that the land to the west of here is all mined and the land to the east remains virgin and untouched, a feature that continues all the way along the line which runs through Aldridge. So often happens in my Canal Hunter episodes, I have been wildly optimistic about how much I thought I would cover. The absence of a bicycle for most of this episode also doesn't help. So I'm going to capture the route between here and the Chasewater Dam on my way back in my next episode. Because if you remember, we're on a mission to deliver coal from Hensford all the way through to the industries beyond Saltley. But we have got to pick up another boat, an unpowered boat known as a day boat or a joey. That's waiting loaded for us up in Anglesey Basin. So in the next episode, that's where we'll start and we'll make our way back from Anglesey Basin down to here and then all the way along the Doe End branch to the lime workings at Hayhead and Longwood. So, hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll catch you soon. Happy hunting and I'll see you soon. Cheerio.